Hey guys, Cody here, and I figured I'd just share this video with you uh, about shipping in the U.S. If you're in the U.S., this is a recent experience I had, so I was going to talk about kind of the process of packaging up, but I'll, I'll briefly touch it because there's actually someone else who uh, I followed their method of packing the painting and shipping it. Um, but I'd like to talk about the cost and kind of how I did it and what it came out to, just so you know what to look for uh, if you ship a painting this size, and you know what my experience of was, you kind of have an idea of the costs and just kind of the overall thing. I know I did one about shipping one internationally. I figured I'd do one for if you're in the U.S. or shipping to the U.S. Just so you have an idea of it, okay? So I'm gonna switch over and kind of show you an idea. So first off, let's talk about the shipping, actual shipping part of it. So how I shipped it was, and I don't have any out here, but, um, I wrapped the painting in glass sign paper. So glass sign is, if you don't know, it's like a like a wax paper. Uh, well, actually, it's not wax paper. It's I don't know how to describe it, but it's it's grease free, oil free, uh, water free. So unlike wax paper, it doesn't spread oils or yellow or decay. It's it's meant to archive, you know, things like canvas and paint. So anyway, it's called glass sign paper. I got it on Amazon. Um, but I wrapped it in glass sign paper on the front. So I laid out the glass sign and then covered it, taped it to the frame. And then once that was covered, then I bought uh, some, I used small bubble wrap and covered the entire painting. So if you don't have bubble wrap that's big enough to cover the whole painting, like it's not as wide, just lay it out in strips and then like tape it over the side. But what you'll want to do is you'll want to do two full coverings, so two of small bubble wrap, and you want to make sure that the the flat side of the bubble wrap, not the bubble side, but the flat side, is facing the painting, so that the bubbles don't leave impressions on the painting. Then once you've done that, then you're gonna do um, same thing with large bubble wrap. You're gonna you're gonna wrap it in. Sorry. You're gonna do a large bubble wrap again two times and you'll want to leave a little excess on the short sides that you don't lay it out so like if you lay it this way you want two inches on this side if you do strips like this you want uh, at least two inches on this side the reason is is once you've kind of wrapped the whole thing then you're gonna tape those sides in and make basically like a little barrier on the sides uh, so then once you've done that uh, what I did was I made little cardboard corners, so I just cut out strips of cardboard, bent it, and then put it on there and taped those kind of in place before I did the bubble wrap. You don't have to do that, I just did. So, once you've got your painting uh, wrapped up in the bubble wrap, that's pretty much all you need as far as protection goes. And then you're going to put it in your box. Let's say this was the box, okay? So you want the box to be two inches taller than your painting because the thing is is that when you buy a box they're almost never going to be the actual size of the painting so you want you're going to have to cut your box down if you don't you're going to just pay extra you're going to be packing extra shipping materials you're going to be paying extra costs as far as um, like the actual shipping cost because the weight and the size so um, let's say that my painting was 10 inches or something and, and that was like this big well you cut two inches above that so so that you have some space uh, above and below your painting and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut uh, however inches like say if it was you know four inches wide you're gonna cut four inches above that and that'll be your flap uh, and then you would just cut all the excess off and that's how you make your your box Again, Agora is who I followed to pack and ship the painting, so I'll link to them in the description. But anyway, so I did that, I cut my box down, I put the painting in there, taped it all up. Uh, I taped, so say this was the top of the box, like this was the box, and this was the side, the bottom and the top. I taped along that, like the long sides, like against the way that the flaps were going just to hold them in place and then I went back and taped every seam kind of like how this is taped on the corner but I taped every corner every seam 
just in case there's moisture or something wherever it's going. All right, and then I and then lastly I just attached uh, the address and paper on the front and just taped that down so that it was there. All right, so that's packing uh, and shipping. So the whole reason, uh, let me flip this around here. The whole reason that I'm even talking about all this is because I wanted to talk about prices really. So let's talk about prices. The box that I got was from U-Haul or let's talk about the size. So the size was a two foot by four foot by one and a half inch painting. Okay. Uh, you know, it's 24 inches by 48 inches by 1.5 inches. And that type of painting is pretty big uh, according to the post office because I just shipped it normal mail. Okay. So let's talk about prices. The box itself was $7 from U-Haul. It was a 48 by like 33 inch box with like four inches uh, in width. I didn't do anything about the width, but I did cut the box down to fit the painting. Uh, so that, that box, like I said, was like seven, eight bucks, something like that. Uh, then let's talk about the glass line. The glass line I got from Amazon, it was about 43, 44 dollars, something like that. Um, and that was for a full roll. So that was $43, but I'll, you know, I'll be able to use that glass line for, let's say at least four paintings, right? If they're all big, if they're small, more than that. Uh, let's talk about the bubble wrap. Bubble wrap I also got from U-Haul because there's one down the street from me, so it's really easy to stop by and get these materials. You can go anywhere that gets you decent ones. You just want small bubble wrap and the large bubble wrap. For me, they were $20 a piece without tax, so about $22 each. Um, but again, I can get probably, let's say safely, three paintings, but probably like four or five. So. And then I actually had to ship it. But look, just taking on the supplies part, uh, you know, it's about 50 between the box and the glass sign is uh, about 50 for the for the two boxes of bubble wrap. And, so, and then I had to get packaging tape. You want to get sturdy packaging tape. You don't want to use cheap tape or else it'll start to lift off the box when you ship it. You definitely don't want that. So about $100 in supplies. Uh, but again, that is considering that I can probably get at least three or four more paintings. If they're all that size, I can get three or four paintings out of all that. So essentially, if you if you broke it down, it was about $25 per supply, okay? So it's $25 for the shipping supplies. Now let's talk about the actual shipping. So when I shipped this uh, this painting, I took it to you know the UPS store, and I don't use FedEx uh, or US, I used USPS, sorry. I don't use UPS or FedEx just because the painting sizes that I ship are just astronomical and I'm just, I just refuse to pay it unless the customer is going to pay that couple hundred extra bucks that it usually costs. I'm not doing it. Um, but it kind of worked out. So I went to uh, US, I went to the United States Post Office and shipped it. Well, normally if you're going to ship like the cheapest option for shipping and I even asked while I was there uh, is ground. So ground is just where it's like, it just takes the longest, you know, it, it, I think the quote is like seven business days or something if it's in the U.S. And that's what I was going to ship it as. It's just ground because I told the person, yeah, it's, it's going to take about a week, right? And I, I include free shipping, so I'm technically eating those shipping costs. Um, but when I went to take it to them and had them look at the price, the price was going to be like $183 for one painting. Um, again, it is a decent sized painting. The box is pretty decent sized, but $183 is, is a lot to ship a painting that size. So when he reran it as Express, Express was actually cheaper. Express came out to $96, which is still a lot, but I expected to pay about that amount. Um, so Express, which actually usually takes one to three days, the, the faster option was actually cheaper. And he said that it had to do with the way that they take calculations for Express differently. So it worked out only in the fact that I paid probably about half um, that I would have if I'd done ground, which is usually the cheaper option. Um, so I got to ship it faster for less. So again, I ended up paying almost $100 just in shipping alone. Now, one thing he told me, if you ship USPS, just you know, to kind of uh, you know, to think about, is that the 
the reason it was so much is because it was a, over 108 inches total for the size of the package for what they consider overage or excess or something like that, oversized. Um, so if you can keep the package under 108 for the total size, then they, he said it actually is cheaper and I was just over it and I'll tell you how to tell. So um, let's say this was the box here. So this would be 12 inches because I think this is, oh no, this is 12 by 24. So let's say this is 24 inches. Okay. And this is 12. Well, you wouldn't just add that up, right? It wouldn't just be 24 and 12, so 36. When they calculate sizes for boxes, what he told me was that it's actually the length plus the width plus the depth times two. So it's, he, they call it girth, I guess. Um, so it would be this, which is, we'll, we'll say an inch, right? Plus this, which is 12 inches. Okay, so that'd be 13 times two because they actually wrap it all the way around. So it would really be 26 plus 24, which is 50. So when I shipped my painting, so this was my box, when I shipped my painting, it was 110. So it was just over the, the cutoff of 108. And he told me that that would have actually saved me money by being 108 or less. So just something to think about. If you can cut your box down to 108 inches or less, then you're going to save money if you ship USPS. Now, if you ship, if you ship FedEx or UPS, I, I could say probably I would just assume by the rule of having smaller boxes um, that it's going to be cheaper just by cutting it down. So, you know, if you can cut it down, do it safely. Right, you don't want to you don't want to impact the painting. You don't want to you know not pack it safely so it doesn't get there because then that's even worse than paying a little more. Um, but that was pretty much it. So overall, for the shipping aspect, it was about two hundred dollars um, to ship this painting. The shipping cost I couldn't really do anything about, but the supplies I'll be able to reuse those supplies for like three or four other paintings. So again, it comes out to about twenty five dollars in shipping supplies. And then I, you know, obviously I had to create the painting, so all of the, the supplies to make the painting as well. So just something to think about. Um, just consider all of these things when you ship. I shipped in the U.S. to the U.S., so I don't know what that's going to look like for other people shipping to the U.S. Um, but in the U.S., that was my experience. I figured I'd share that with you guys so you had an idea of, of how much it costs uh, to ship in the U.S. And, and then... You know, just what my experience was. They, I mean, they took it just fine, and they said it was going to take about one to three business days. So it's pretty good. Um, but otherwise, than that, like other than that, did, if you guys have any other questions or anything else, please leave them in the description below. Again, I will link to Agora's uh, packing, packaging, and shipping video so that you can kind of see what I did to to pack the painting. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any other questions or comments, just leave them, and I'll be sure to answer them. And I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day.